Welcome to AKC Live, bringing you the latest dog news and entertainment from the American Kennel Club. I'm Sherelle Starr, in for Sam Ryan. AKC Live is looking for canine co-hosts. If you're in New York City and would like the chance for your dog to be on our show, send an email to us at pitches at akc.tv. Today I have three co-hosts, Nala, Django, and Sir Beckett. My co-hosts all share one thing in common and are part of a growing trend. They have their own Instagram accounts. With me now is Stephanie Wiggins, owner of Django the Gent, Elkie Vargas, owners of Sir Beckett, and Ellen Chang, owner of Nala. Thank you all for joining us today and bringing your adorable Instagram dog stars with you. So Stephanie, I actually want to start with you today. Sure. What inspired you to start taking photos of Django and posting them online? Um, well, before we got Django and we're deciding whether or not to get a Dachshund or another breed, I would go on Instagram mm -hmm. and I would just look up pictures of Dachshunds because uh -huh. I never had one growing up. And I would see all these adorable photos of Dachshunds in bed. Um, I mean, just the cutest little things. People would personify their Dachshunds and humanize them. And it made me very comfortable with the idea of getting one. So when we got Django, it was inevitable that I was going to share similar photos that I had seen on Instagram mm -hmm. because he was just too adorable not to. Right. <laughs> That's wonderful. And Elkie, I know Sir Beckett has become sort of the unofficial mayor of your area in yes. town. Um, what type of people follow you? Like, what do the fans say when they meet him? He's a showstopper. <laughs> And most of the time, everybody calls him Lassie. Oh. <laughs> so, um, I did as well this morning. Yes, yes if yes, I had a dollar yes. every time. Exactly. Uh, we'd be living on the beach somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, people just, they haven't seen Collies in a really long time. Uh, you know, they had their, their popularity from Lassie in the 50s and 60s. And then he just trots down the street. And people just stop dead in their tracks and want to want to pet him. And, He's so calm and cool and everybody just adores him. So our message with Beckett is to spread the love and we bring him to the park and he just sits and watches the piano players and everybody crowds around him and he just, he loves it. You think his size has anything to do with that because he's such a lovable big so. dog? I think so, because he's, he's like a big snuggler oh. and he's so fluffy and the kids are really drawn to that. And just, again, people are, haven't seen a collie in a really long time. Right. So um, they just stop. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And Ellen, I know you got Nala about six months ago in April, so she's the youngest of our little stars on the show today. Yes. What inspired you to sort of put her online? Well, I actually grew up with a golden retriever, so um, after he had passed away, um, I would be like stalking all these other goldens on Instagram. And so when we ended up getting Nala, I was like, I have to start an Instagram account for her. You know, I need to like document all of her adventures. So right. um, yeah, I, it came pretty naturally when we got her just to like get her own handle. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And so anything um, amazing that's happened so far since you've gotten her? Um, well, one of her videos did go viral um, when she was about two, right when we got her, around two months old. Okay. I taught her to go on um, the slide. Uh -huh. So we went to like our local playground and then she just like learned really quickly how to go up the slide and down the slide without any fear. Um, especially because my older dog was afraid of everything. I wanted to raise her as like a fearless girl. So that is exactly what she's become. You know, Elkie, uh, tell, tell me a little bit about sort of raising an Instagram star for a dog especially. So what's the, the steps to that? <laughs> you know what? The steps we took was just giving him a handle and starting to take pictures of his adventures and, you know, people petting him and all different sorts. And wherever he goes, we, we follow him with our little camera. So that's really how it started. And again, people just love seeing him. So we figured why not spread it? Got it. And, and yeah. has this become a business for any of you guys? Like, is this sort of replaced your day job? Not for me. No? No? no. Um, Stephanie? I launched a dog gear company called Django. The name was obviously inspired by this guy about a little less than two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it's adventure gear for small and medium-sized dogs. So that currently is my job, but I wouldn't say, you know. It's separate from Instagram. <laughs> got it, got it, I love it. And so how long has that been going on? That's uh, just under two years. Got it, okay, mm. wonderful. So you're bringing in a little dough, Django, we like that. <laughs> uh, and then Elkie, I mean, with Nala specifically, uh, or in general, how, have she, how has she really responded to people coming <laughs> up to her on the street? Oh my God, it's like really hard to get down the block without, you know, stopping a, 
like a bunch of times. Everyone wants to like ask if that's a puppy. Can we play with her? Can we pet her? What's her name? How old is she? So it definitely is, um, has, we have gathered a lot of attention since we got her. And actually thinking about sort of the number of Instagram dog stars online and how it's just exploded on, you know, digital and on social media, do you think um, the market's too flooded with dogs online and on Instagram, on Twitter and that sort of thing? There can never be yeah. too many dogs. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I, I agree so with you. I agree with you. I just love it, so I don't think there's too many. Also, and I know, Stephanie, um, you, of course, have been doing this for a while, and I know a ton of brands reach out to you. Mm -hmm. um, how do you select the brands that you work with and actually post on their behalf um, on your page? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we're very selective with who we partner with, only because we would never promote something that we wouldn't use ourselves. Mm -hmm. We feed Django a very healthy, natural diet, no additives, no artificial ingredients. So if a brand did come out to us and wanted us to promote a treat that I didn't think was kind of up to my personal standards, I wouldn't do that. So it's really like brands that we've heard of or brands that have a really cool mission behind them and are really doing good or you know, making something very healthy for the dogs. I love it. And Elki, um, any tips for our viewers at home on taking just a great photo of their dog to post online? You know, I don't know if there's any tips except for treats oh. <laughs> um, to, get, to get their ears forward and shaking a bag. Um, you know, it's just, and some of them are, the best ones are not planned, so. Very true. Yeah, so some of the candids are the best ones. So um, yeah, I, I, her, I honestly don't have any <laughs> tips except treats. <laughs> Great, and yeah. Ellen, do you have any tips at all? Um, I would say, you know, just um, be candid, right? Like mm. catch her when she's like doing, doing the most natural and um, the silliest things, right? Um, and her reaction to like seeing different animals out in the park or, just like observing certain instances. So she's, yeah, she's just very naturally like entertaining, I feel. So <laughs> yeah, just be there at the right moment to catch it. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, that was a great set of tips, ladies. And thank you all for joining us today. And be sure to follow our furry stars on Instagram at Django the Gent, at Sir Beckett the Collie, and at Nala underscore the Goldie. See you all later. Thank you guys. <laughs> It's time for our fun fact. Did you know the Dandy Dinmount Terrier is the only breed name for a fictional person? A character in the novel Guy Mannering by Sir Walter Scott. In the story, Dandy Dinmount is a rough but friendly farmer who owns a couple of dogs. Today, we've talked about dogs who pose for Instagram. Most often, those canines have to remain composed and still. Some dogs are quite natural at that, but some dogs are made to move fast and with great skill. Dog agility is a sport where you direct your dog through a preset obstacle course within a certain time limit. Agility became a sport with the AKC in 1994, and today there are over one million dogs who participate in AKC's agility program. Courses typically have between 14 to 20 obstacles and can include tunnels, weave poles, tire jumps, and seesaws. AKC is proud to announce the top two agility dogs in the country for the first half of 2018. The top master agility champion goes to Misty, a four-year-old border collie from Binghamton, New York. And the top preferred agility champion hails from Woodenville, Washington, a nine-year-old Papia named Whimsy. Congratulations to both Misty and Whimsy. Sam Ryan had the chance to sit down with one of our agility champions to hear what it takes to be a champion team. I'm here with Betsy Lynch and Ren, the two-time agility defending champ in the eight-inch category. What was this last year like for her? Last year was probably the most successful year that we've had, and she's had a lot of good years. In addition to winning nationals, she won the Invitational in December. She won the Weed Pool event at the Incredible Dog Challenge in September, and she's just had an incredibly awesome year. When you're the defending champion, everyone expects you to do well, so there's always a little bit of added pressure. But we like the pressure and we, we have fun. What is she like before she goes in the ring? Does she feel pressure? Is she excitable? What is her demeanor? She's pretty calm. I warm her up and get her very excited, and then I calm her down a little so that she doesn't go in just too wound up. And she usually likes to watch the dog in front of her go. 
and then I tell her, you know, let's go do what we always do, and <laughs> we go out and we do it. How important is your relationship with her? Oh, it's the utmost of important. We're extremely close, and uh, you know, it pays off in the ring. We can almost read each other's minds, and <laughs> she makes up for any mistake I make, and she never makes mistakes. You tell me she's been doing this for as long as you can remember. Got her when she was a tiny puppy, and she didn't do agility when she was a tiny puppy, but she was learning and learning how to learn, which is the most important thing, and just getting her to really be excited and have a lot of drive and, you know, um, get a reward structure in line so that when you are ready to do agility, you have a way to reward them that's very rewarding to the dog. So the relationship you were talking about in the ring, how important that is, how right. she reads you, you read her, right. that is like, it's very symbiotic away from the ring as well. That's correct. What do you get from her? Oh, I get a lot of love and devotion from her. We're a team, you know, she knows we're a team and she's very willing to do what she's supposed to do if I tell her. And I understand you have additional dogs mm -hmm. who you train as well. Right. Um, how does she interact with them and does her success help them? Um, two of my others are older and they're retired agility dogs, but the puppy that I have, the 18-month-old, which is basically her niece, she's very instrumental in, in helping, and I, I think the puppy has changed a little bit of her demeanor, and she certainly has brought the puppy along. I just make sure that she gets to do everything first. <laughs> so what does she learn from the puppy? What does she how her demeanor has changed? Um, I think she's just a little bit more easygoing when just out and about around people and stuff. She's very friendly. What are the expectations for 2018 and what's next for Ren? For 2018, I hope to be running both dogs at Nationals, um, the puppy and Ren. You know, we're just going to keep working hard and enjoying what we're doing. Wow, that is some amazing teamwork. If you want to find out more about AKC's agility program, go to akc.org. If you happen to be in London on September 9th and are a French bulldog owner and lover, this day is for you. It's a one-day pop-up cafe for Frenchies only, where they dine on pup cakes, dog nuts, and puppuccino. If you don't have your own French bulldog, no worries. Frenchie lovers are welcome to attend to cuddle. Reservations are necessary. Go to pugcafe.com for more information. And if you have a French Bulldog, we want your video for the next Meet the Breeds documentary. Upload your French Bulldog footage to akc.tv slash submit and we may include it. In dog sports news, the Havanese Club of America held its national specialty August 6th through 11th. Best of Breed was won by Bono, who is currently the number one Havanese in the country and the number four toy dog. He was also best in sweepstakes at the 2017 Havanese Club of America national specialty. Bono is bred and owned by Raffi Schindler, Mary King, Julie Vogel, and Taffy McFadden, and is shown by Taffy McFadden. Congratulations! Oh, to be a dog? To be a dog? AKC goes off leash and asks, Dog or cat? Dogs. Dog. I prefer dogs. Dog. Dog or cat? Dog. Cat. Dog. Dogs. Cat. Dog? Dog. Dogs. Cat. Dog. Dog. Oh, dog, definitely. Dog. Dog. Dog? Yep. Well, right now I have a cat. But I'm, I'm Cheryl Starr. Thanks for joining me today, and thank you to my co hosts Nala, Sir Beckett, and Django. Be sure to download AKC TV on Roku and Apple TV. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. AKC TV, it's good dog TV. We leave you with our good dog moment of the week, courtesy of this week's co host. Send us your good dog moment to akc.tv slash submit. Furniture provided by the dog-friendly Mitchell Gold and Bob Williams. Comfort for all.